I finally got certified. Yippee! After almost four months of back and forth training, I finally took the chance to showcase my skills in the ocean. Recently, I took a two-day trip with my dive instructor to the nearby Thousand Islands of Jakarta, specifically Pulau Pramuka, which is approximately an hour away from Jakarta by speedboat. Both days were filled with diving in order for my instructor to really test my knowledge and dive skills in a real-life environment. Most of our dives were filled with fun ways to test my knowledge. Like, look, I got to explore a sunken ship. This is actually a way my instructor tested my fundamentals, implementing all of the fundamental dive skills, buoyancy, trim, breathing, and propulsion, ensuring that I'm able to go through the crevices of the sunken ship. And we even got a turtle on camera! Here's me and my instructor. In this dive, we were taking a look at my trim to ensure I have proper trim and showcasing the different fundamentals properly. Anyways, as a quick recap, we've covered everything from the basics of diving all to mastering the essential techniques of Saigon. It's been an incredible journey with you all, and I'm so excited to share my final thoughts with you. First of all, I want to take a moment to reflect on the course itself. This course was phenomenal, highlighting some of my favorite techniques learned during the course. Overall, almost every single fundamental skill that I've learned through the course were vital in enhancing my overall diving experience. These fundamentals have been the backbone of my progress and I want to emphasize just how essential they are for any diver. Let me tell you, these fundamentals have been a game changer. They make every aspect of the dive smoother and much more efficient. Having a strong grasp of the fundamentals not only improves your overall dive skills, but also makes it way easier to demonstrate the various side mount skills. When learning the side mount skills, such as regular switching or estrel, they all require the fundamentals. Ensuring your buoyancy is right during the skills, such as regular switching, ensures you won't descend up at a rate you shouldn't. Or even in an event where you would need to share air, your dive buddy won't wait for you. If their air is out, they will most likely be panicking, so quick thinking is a must. Therefore, having fundamentals are key to successful and safe diving. Anyways, let's talk gear. The gear I currently use is a Razer 4.0 Sigma BCD, but I had replaced the harness with a travel version. Because since it fits me a lot better, it's much easier to control my cylinders, and as the name suggests, it's much easier to travel with. Quick PSA, Make sure to do your research before you buy anything. I'm generally a very small person, but I did not expect the Razer 4.0 not to fit me properly. When I first bought it, I thought they were all the same size, but when I tried it on for the first time, I got it fit to my body. It did not fit at all. It was much too large, and so therefore I had to buy a whole new harness, which of course costed me a lot. So please make sure you choose wisely. Moving on, let's talk about the challenges. Like any learning experience, there were challenges. I was still fresh into back mount and I just got used to a back mount configuration. Well, I was only certified for a year, but now I had to adjust to a whole new configuration with much more responsibilities. So of course, I faced a lot of obstacles. And I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, side mount training is hard. Many tears were shed and sacrifices had to be made. Balancing school, social life, and the demands of this course wasn't easy. There were moments where I questioned if I could still even keep going. Even from the beginning of the course, my instructor would always remind me that side mount is a task heavy configuration. So I made sure that I tried my best in hopes of succeeding. How I face these challenges are generally rather than being overwhelmed by this new configuration, I approached it with a much more methodical mindset. Firstly, I embraced a positive attitude. Recognizing that challenges are evident to any learning experience would be much better for you. You have to accept that there will always be a learning curve. Accepting this allowed me to navigate obstacles with much ease. I dedicated time to thoroughly understand the principles behind sidewalk mount diving, and especially patience. Patience had become an ally. I acknowledged that mastery takes time, and sidewalk mount demands time and dedication. And so each training day presented to me an opportunity to refine my skills. Consistent practice allowed me to gradually build up my confidence, adapting my approach based on the lessons I learned from both my successes and my setbacks ensured a dynamic and evolving strategy for me. And in essence, taking on a challenge involved a combination of positivity, education, mentorship, adaptability, and especially patience, as I mentioned before. And look where we are now. I'm finally certified and I don't regret it one bit. Despite the challenges, I feel that taking on this course had shaped me into a diver that 
maybe junior open water version of myself would have never imagined becoming. This journey wasn't without its difficulties, of course, but the steps taken laid the foundation for my successful transition to San Juan diving. As I look ahead, my excitement for future dives is through the roof. Whether it's exploring new dive sites, advancing in my education, or even trying out different types of gear or different types of dives. I can't wait for what's next. But enough about me. I want to hear from you. Have you tried sidewalk diving? Share your experiences, thoughts, or questions in the comments below. Let's keep the conversation going. And as we wrap up this series, thank you so much for joining me on this incredible side mount diving journey. If you enjoyed the series, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell for more exciting content. Until next time, safe bubbles!